Welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Jim Harrison and I am a curriculum developer with Juniper Education Services. In this segment we will be discussing the different types of forwarding modes that are performed on the Branch SRX series device. To start off with, what are the different forwarding mode types and why are they important? Well, within the data plane forwarding operations of a Branch SRX device, there are two different forwarding modes and these two modes are quite different from each other. It's important to be able to understand these modes so that you can properly accommodate the network traffic that is coming through your SRX device. The first type of forwarding mode is called flow-based mode, which is also known as session-based mode. And in flow-based mode, the SRX device maintains a session state table. And any session or flow information is cached so that subsequent packets for the same flow as well as packets for the return flow for the session are allowed through the device for faster processing. And because of this, each incoming packet is examined to determine if it is part of an already existing session. And if the packet is part of an existing session, then the SRX forwards it through to its destination. But if the packet is not part of an existing session, then the SRX stores information from the packet in the session state table. It extracts information such as source and destination IP addresses, uh, IP protocol, and source and destination ports, uh, and then stores those in the table. Now the settings for flow-based mode are configured under the edit security hierarchy in the command line interface. And flow-based mode is required for any firewall security services such as setting up security zones, security policies, stateful firewalling, NAT, IPsec, also unified threat management and intrusion prevention. All of these services provide security for the SRX device and for network traffic going through it. Now in contrast to flow-based mode, there is what's called packet-based mode forwarding. And packet-based mode forwarding performs traditional router forwarding behavior. And what that means is that each packet is individually inspected, not for a session lookup, but instead for a forwarding lookup in the routing table and then the SRX forwards the packet out the appropriate outgoing interface. So if we had a packet coming in from this router here uh, in our diagram, the SRX would then look at the destination address of that packet, see if there's a route in the routing table for that address, and then forward it out the appropriate uh, outgoing interface. Packet-based mode is required for packet-based mode services such as, uh, or namely, primarily, MPLS forwarding. And you can configure it with the following command, set security forwarding options, family MPLS, mode packet based. So let's take a look at uh, one of our SRX devices. So here we have an SRX device, and without even looking at the security hierarchy to see what mode it's in, there's an operational mode command that I can run to go ahead and already see what command that it's running in. And that command is show security flow status. Now if I look at the output here, I see that the INET forwarding mode shows as flow based. Note that the MPLS forwarding mode here is set to drop, meaning that MPLS traffic is not able to be forwarded while the device is in flow based mode. So now let's uh, enter configuration mode and look at the security hierarchy configuration that's shown here. And here we have security policies set up as well as security zones. And then we have some interfaces applied to those zones. Now I can go ahead and configure the command to put this into packet-based mode. Now if I go ahead and try to commit that command in here, I'll get an error. I'm not able to do it while there's other flow-based configuration uh, on the device. I would have to first remove any configuration there. And then I could run the command. And then the commit would succeed as we'll see the commit check here succeed. However, in the interest of time, since the SRX device requires a reboot when you change it from flow-based mode to packet-based mode, I'm going to go ahead and just roll back that change. And we have another SRX device 
that is already set up in packet-based mode. So I can run the same command, show security flow status. And this time we'll see that the INET forwarding mode does display packet-based and notice that the MPLS forwarding mode also displays the state of packet-based, meaning it's ready for MPLS forwarding operation. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, an example we have, our, our basic flow-based mode example. So this diagram represents how our devices are currently configured with each other. We have router 1 called R1 connected uh, on an interface of the SRX device and also another router called R2 connected off the same device. Uh, each has their corresponding interface within a, uh, a security zone and there's a policy to allow any traffic from the trust zone out through the untrust zone. And while it's in uh, flow-based mode, we'll be able to see that the SRX is recording information in the session state table. So here we can go ahead and look at the session to see there's an operational mode command you can run on the SRX to see if there's any current uh, security flow sessions uh, occurring right now. That command is run show security flow session. Currently there's zero sessions going through the SRX device. So let's create a session from R1 to R2 and then look at the session information. So here on R1 we're just going to go ahead and uh, run a telnet uh, to the command, telnet command to the IP address of router 2. We'll go ahead and log in, establish the connection here. Okay. And then we'll go back to the SRX and run the same command. And here we see that a session has been created. It's from the address of 10.1.1.2 to 10.2.2.2. And if we go ahead and end the session on router 1, we'll see that the session shows back as 0. Now, because you may not want to run uh, all traffic in flow-based mode and you want to run some traffic in packet-based mode, then it may be advantageous to run what's called selective stateful services, uh, packet-based services. And here we have the logical packet flow diagram. Whether the traffic is flow-based mode or, or in session-based mode, uh, incoming packets have to pass through either class of service or any stateless firewall filters that are applied. Then it can look at whether uh, it, it's going to operate in the flow-based mode uh, using the flow module that's within the Junos OS, or whether it's going to bypass all of this and just operate in uh, packet-based mode. So we have what's called selective stateless packet services. And you can configure an inbound filter on the, in, on the incoming interface so that it will have an action of then packet services and it will just bypass all of the flow based mode and then just perform a routing lookup uh, go out the outbound interface and here's an example that we have that we're going to go ahead and, and go through and uh, demonstrate this so we have an interface connected to R1 and we're going to use an inbound filter called selective we're also going to apply the same filter inbound on the interface that's connected to R2 so that the return traffic can come back through the same filter and operate in packet-based mode where it's just going to perform a router lookup. Allow from the source address of either R1 or R2 and then have the action of then packet mode. There's a second term of then accept where all the other traffic is then going to operate in flow-based mode. So let's go ahead and try this on the SRX device. So here we are back on the SRX device and we have the firewall filter created and it looks just like uh, shown on the slide here with the term from the source address of uh, router 1 or router 2's address with an action of then packet mode. We're going to go ahead and now apply this to the interfaces.
And again, we need to apply it to both interfaces. And we're going to go ahead and start the Telnet session again from router 1 to router 2. And I think I may have jumped the gun there and done it before it was actually done committing. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. I'm just going to clear any session that may have been on here. Clear. Security flow session all. Okay. So I'm going to just show that there's no sessions here. Okay. And so this time with the filter on there, we should see that after this establishes the Telnet connection, that there still should show a zero sessions because that traffic is not going through flow-based mode. It's only going through packet-based mode. Okay, and go ahead and close this out. Now, let's suppose that you need an IPsec tunnel, and you but you still want the SRX to handle traffic as if it were in packet-based mode. So since packet, since flow-based mode is required for security features such as IPsec, you can emulate a packet-based mode-like behavior on the SRX with a few simple commands. If you put in these commands here displayed on the slide, such as set security policies default policy permit all, which modifies the default security policy to allow all traffic, even ones that don't match any security policy, and you disable TCP SYN checking with these commands shown here on the slide, uh, what you're going to do is that you're going to configure the SRX to handle traffic more closely to a packet-based mode operation. So with these commands, you don't need to implement any security policies for network traffic because all traffic will be allowed through. Stateful firewalling is also not going to, going to be used, and since packet-based mode doesn't have any TCP session uh, SYN or sequence checking, because it doesn't care about TCP sessions, or any sessions for that matter, then the SRX is emulating that behavior as well. Still, the SRX is technically continuing to operate in flow-based mode, and if you were to run the command again, show security flow session, while you're trying to emulate this packet-based mode, you'll see that the sessions are still maintained on the session state table. But sometimes this is an, a an advantageous way, uh, instead of using the selective services, to have the SRX uh, emulate packet-based mode, but yet still use the security uh, firewall services um, configuration. This concludes the Branch SRX Forwarding Modes Learning Bytes segment. Thank you for viewing this presentation, and I hope that the information shared here will be helpful to you. Juniper Learning Bytes. View more at www.juniper.net slash learningbytes. They're free, concise lessons on specific subjects, relevant for all skill levels, taught by training experts, and available whenever and wherever you're ready to learn. Juniper Learning Bytes. Expand your knowledge bit by bit.